You want my opinion? Yes. Condemning Hamas or condemning Israel? Yes. Completely useless. Yeah. Completely useless. Why? You, I condemn Hamas, you condemn Israel, interview is over. What happened? Nothing. Yeah. It is just checkpoint, like morality checkpoints. But I've interviewed a lot of pro-Palestinians, for example, some of whom will immediately say, I unreservedly condemn the terror attacks of October the 7th, mm -hmm. and then go on to criticize yeah. Israel. And I think that's a very, well, it's a position I can completely respect. Yeah. But I find it much harder to respect a pro-Palestinian guest on my show if they simply resolutely refuse to say yeah. that they can condemn the terror yeah. attacks. Yes. I find that less yeah. worthy of respect. But you see, this is the problem with the news. We go into the circular motion of the same as one thing that I have noticed, mm. not just on the coverage of these events, the, 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 uh, the events before and before and before, Every time this starts, people say, we don't know what's happening. It's a very complicated situation. Right. What is happening now? And for me, as a viewer, if a conflict that's been there for 75 years and the media with all this technology has been covering it and we hear the same exact words, we don't know what's happening. It's complicated. It's a very complex. That is a failure of the media apparatus. That is the failure to themselves and for the audience because why every time this happens, it seems like it is happening from 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 point zero and I think to help understand that I will get to the f October 7th I will get to the condemnation I will get to the self-defense but I think maybe we can do we, we have like all the time in the world yeah. and we can discuss this could this interview could be a bookmark yeah. landmark for maybe looking at that conflict yeah. in a deeper way that nobody has gone there before yeah. we have the views we have people waiting, yes. you know, as I said, I'm the least qualified to discuss that, but it's an opportunity not, to use listen, it. I'm not massively yeah. well qualified myself. I, yeah, both of us, I'm like, a, I, I mean, look Ar at us. I'm two, an Irish Catholic, I right? mean, look at us, yeah, two privileged people. Given that you, last night you wanted people to condemn what happened last night, in your belief that it was an Israeli airstrike, and you were ferocious in demanding that repeatedly, yes, will you now take the opportunity to condemn what Hamas did on October the 7th? Final, I only ask you one more time. Ah, 22 Arab states convened at the beginning of this, including my state, my government, and they condemned... Do you personally condemn they, it? They condemned the killing of civilians from all sides. Right. You know what is... Not all sides. No, 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 from all sides. No, do you condemn what from happened all October yes, 7th? Yes, yes, yes. Why are you so reluctant you asked, to condemn you are, it? You asked, you asked. You were the one last I, night I'll demanding you, people I'll condemn things. I'll, I'll tell you why. I would be the first to condemn. If I ever saw you asking an Israeli official to mm. condemn, did you ask the ambassador to condemn all the atrocities? I will be asked. Asking, I'll tell you. I'll I will be you. asking I'll the representative you of the ambassador. No, no, no. You tonight. had the ambassador before Amba me. I, you did yes. not ask her to condemn okay. anything. Then you didn't watch the interview. I did. Yeah. I did. Okay. Let me ask you one more time. I did. Because I'm not so sure if I you heard not, my question. I will not answer this question unless you okay. allow me to explain. No, no. That's, that's fine. It. You don't have it's to good. answer it. No, no, no. I'll tell you. But if you're not going to answer I, it, don't I, demand that other people I, condemn I, things. No, 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 no. And certainly don't ask me to condemn things. If you won't condemn 1,400 people being slaughtered. Our oh, position, our position. How can you not condemn what they our, did? Our position is very clear. I represent the Palestinian leadership mm. and people. I represent the PLO. That's yeah. the sole legitimate represent, re representation of the Palestinian right. people. President Mahmoud Abbas, the government. I know. Hamas is not part I know. of the government. I know. Okay, that's number one. Num number two, that legitimate representation I represent mm. have committed for 30 years for first non-violence and negotiations. Mm. I belong to that camp. You're, you're, you're asking the wrong person. Committed to international resolutions mm. and committed to the recognition of Israel. We recognize the state of Israel mm. long before anyone else. Mm. And we still waiting for Israel's recognition of us. And guess what happened in this mm. th 30 years? Every political avenue was blocked. Every legal avenue like the ICJ and the ICC is blocked. Every hope for any Palestinian is blocked. You are talking to a person who re religiously believe in nonviolence. So please don't ask me that question. If you believe I in nonviolence, Ambassador, why are you I reluctant? Answer, I, I, I answer, if you believe in nonviolence, that's why I picked diplomacy. Why are you so reluctant that's to why condemn I wanted to become an ambassador? The worst because I believe in, in the power. I believe in the power of diplomacy. 
I believe in the power of nonviolence. Okay. I believe that we should always return and maintain the moral high ground. But that's why I am answering the way I'm answering. Okay, I understand. That's why I'm understand. challenging you. Okay, because, because the moment I accept your question is the moment I accept we are the instigators of violence. We are the aggressors. Mm -hmm. And I asked you the question before. I, she didn't say I, that. I, no, no, no. I didn't that's, say that to no, you. No, that, the moment, I understand you're not part of Hamas. No, 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 no. Not me. Not me only. I understand the entire Palestinian this, people know, are the instigators of violence. I understand you're violence. not. The question. I understand you're not Hamas. Let me explain, Pierce, please. But I understand cool it. Down, cool down, cool down. The moment I accept this logic of condemnation and the lack of Israeli officials being asked by you and mm. everybody else to condemn, that moment I accept mm. that my people are lesser of a people, mm. that we are not equal, mm -hmm. that we are a, a lesser of, a, you know, children of a God. And I don't believe okay, that. Okay, no, I, I think and you I do. think I think, no, I think Palestinian the people moment, are absolutely the, the, entitled to fairness and equality okay, and human rights, many of the things they've been okay. deprived of for decades. The moment, I would love to see peace the, in the Middle East, but nobody can show moment, me how what Hamas did in October the, the 7th moment, has done anything for the Palestinian people the moment, other than set everything back the moment, and make peace even more unlikely. The moment I see that equity, that balance, yeah, I'll be the first to use any word you want. Mm. But so long as there is this imbalance, mm. this racism against Palestinians, mm. this consideration of us, of, laying, of being, you know, one-fifth... But I'm not racist against you know, Palestinians. No, no, I think... I, uh, I just want to ask you a question. So last we left it, you did refuse to uh, condemn Hamas murdering Israelis on October 7th, and it seems as if nothing has changed. But I couldn't help but to think, do you, all, do you condemn 9-11? That's such a ridiculous question. No, it's a yes question. or no. This it's is yes an interrogation no. of a, yes I'm a New no. York citizen. Well, actually, it's a, si it's it's a simple yes or question. No. Of course. No, uh, it's a, of Can course. Can you stop deflecting of questions? She but said, of course. Cool. Ridiculous. So what I is, said, of course. What is the difference it's not a between Israel's 9-11? I'm not here to... Is she the interviewer or are you? Actually, it's she's raising... I think, I think the point she's making, unless I'm wrong, is if you condemn that, why won't you condemn what happened? Because that was Israel's 9-11. I'm not here to answer her questions. Can you ask her that for me? Well, we did this last week. I will now ask what Emily just asked. Because it's actually a valid question. It's Israel's 9-11. If you're happy to publicly condemn 9-11... Why are you not happy to condemn Israel's 9-11? In fact, it was a lot worse, statistically. 9-11 is Palestine's 24-7. That's completely, so what? completely Let me bring in Louise. Absurd. Let me bring in Louise here. Um, I found it really shocking, I have to say, that your organisation within our lifetime said that it was an act of resistance on October the 7th. I mean, that is the most un-Islamic thing I've ever heard in my life, tying the hands of little children behind them, covering them in petrol and then burning them alive. Please tell me, what is resistance about such inhumane torture of kids. Since you want to bring up Islam, in Islam we believe that the bloodshed of any innocent person is equal to killing all of humanity. Um, and this is something that, you know, we believe. Unfortunately, uh, Palestinians are put in a situation where they're in an open-air prison. What we were celebrating that day is them breaking out of that open-air prison. I don't understand how the world expects it's one of the reasons. People. It's one of the reasons why you're not so keen to condemn what Hamas did on October the 7th because you're fearful of publicly doing that. Are all Palestinians fearful of speaking out against Hamas, actually? Because there's a very reason, very good reason to be fearful. No, there's no reason to be fearful. My life is not, if anything, you know, living in New York City my whole life, there are many Zionist institutions, including the universities that I attended, um, and campaigns against me for being pro-Palestinian, mm. including putting my face um, on trucks to drive around Midtown and Times Square for two weeks um, just this summer, calling me a jihadi. So Man, that's what not, I'm fearful of. It's not because of. you're pro-Palestine, it's because you're pro-murder. There's a big yep. difference. Absolutely. We are all pro-Palestinian liberation from a terrorist group called Hamas, mm. Apparently, everyone here but you. What about from the Apparently occupation? Most... Are you pro Palestinian liberation I have a from the occupation, the siege, and the blockade? You want to talk you about keep occupation? You're asking me questions. I am asking but you're you questions. Changing because the topic you're the one time I ask you're you a question. You're pro murder. All right. Jordan, no, no, wait, I, I, I tell you what, Emily, I'll allow that. You, you, you have asked her a question. She can ask you Go one. Ahead. Go on. I just question? asked, do you support Palestinian liberation from the from siege Hamas. and blockade There's and the no occupation? That's factually the incorrect. How can I talk no, to somebody no who doesn't even blockade. accept basic facts? The United facts. Nations partition plan divided the land. You waged the war. You what does that have to do with the fact that there's a there. 17... I do not accept killing any civilian, but would you tell me that the Israeli soldiers that have killed today 140 Palestinian children and 105 Palestinian women are also terrorists?
I think that the Israeli, that? I think the Israeli people are entitled to defend themselves against what happened in the last 48 hours. I'm not defending. Uh, I'm not for a moment defending everything the Israeli government's done in the last de few decades. Of course, I've always, where it's been justified, criticised what they've been doing. Uh, but on this occasion, but, but, I, I'm not interested but, in playing what about you with you. I'm simply asking. Do you? Do you? Do you? I'm simply asking you. Do you unreservedly condemn? The I condemn of any. Yeah, I, I condemn. People. I condemn any killing of any civilian, whether Palestinian or Israeli. Mm. But you have to accept that if Israel has the right to defend itself, Palestinians also must have the same right of being able to defend. But themselves. nobody has a right to Especially, commit. Nobody has a right to commit uh, acts no, of but, terrorism. But you agree with that, would, right? Would, would you say no? I am asking. Would you say that we also have the right to defend ourselves as as human beings? I think that there has been an oppression of the Palestinian people in Gaza for way too long. I think that there needs to be a peace settlement. We finally Great. got there. We finally got there in Northern Ireland. But I don't understand how anybody with even half a brain would think the way to get a peace settlement is to kill nearly a thousand mostly innocent Israelis who have nothing to do with the conflict, many of whom were attending a music festival and get machine gunned to pieces. There is no you, way you, you, there is no way you, that you, kind of that kind of attack is ever going to forge peace, is there? Absolutely, but uh, let's look forward. Now at this very moment there are hostages, uh, there are Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails, there are Israeli prisoners in Gaza. The best step forward is the following. Immediate exchange of prisoners, immediate stop of all the fighting, immediate ceasefire, and opening the road for what you have said. Something like what happened in Ireland, ending the Israeli illegal occupation, allowing Palestinians finally to be free from oppression and to live side by side. I personally wouldn't mind if we could live side by side in two-state solution. But if Israel kills the two states option, I think the only solution is that we live together in one country in peaceful. Can I ask you? I know and, you're not a... in, in one in one democratic state. Okay, I know you're not a where, member. Where, where we both have equal rights. Yeah. And we both are, are entitled to the same hmm. equal human rights. Uh, I think that's the only way out of this situation. And you you we cannot say. I mean, I could list to you. Now, uh, so many atrocities. Let me tell you one thing from my own personal experience. Once in 1996, I was treating an injured person. I was a medical person in my white coat, and an Israeli sniper saw me and shot me twice. I still carry 35 shrapnels in my back, but I don't keep talking about that. I think the way out of this is to, is to stop all forms of violence, to stop all fine forms of conflict. I will not. I will not allow the talking points of the Israeli military to become dominant mm. of what happened on that day. You know, you are Palestinians the, are subject say, to a genocidal look, me, war. Collective punishment in Gaza is real. Let me, let me respond. You are the only pro-Palestinian person I've had on the show in two weeks who has tried to make out that this just didn't happen on October the 7th, or somehow you are was perpetrated by Israelis. You are Israelis. misrepresenting what I am well, saying. Do you, do you, well, I've got two questions. They're very straightforward. Do you believe that 1,500 people were slaughtered, including 260 people at a music festival? You're a musician. And secondly, do you condemn the people who did it? They're not so, difficult Piers, questions. I would like to quote something that you just said to the former spokesperson for the IDF. This was your mm. exact sentence not long okay. ago. You said... It's difficult to tell between combatants and non-combatants. So yeah. you, the implication of what you said was somehow it was understandable that Israel has killed a Palestinian child I every 15 that. minutes in Gaza. I didn't say that. For the last, no, but somehow they I couldn't tell that those children were not combatants, according to no, you. No, I didn't it's say that. It's understandable. I didn't say that, and I have said it is absolutely appalling the number of children who are dying in Gaza. It's appalling and it will get worse. I make no bones about that and, at all. And, and I have to I say, say and I have to say... But you have to start, you have to start are... surely, from a humanity point of view, I can absolutely express my horror at the deaths of Palestinian innocent civilians, as I have done many times over the years. I think it's horrifying. Uh, and I think this is why I, I have a serious problem with the proposed ground invasion, because I think it will create uh, unbelievably large numbers of civilian casualties, and I'm not sure that the strategy will work. Um, but I'm just curious why you, who is 
I know you, you care about people. I know you care passionately about the Palestinian civilians. But you're the only pro-Palestine voice I've had who's even tried to suggest that what Hamas did on October the 7th was not as bad as we think. So is that what you but think? What I mean, do, do you we not... think? But what do we think, Piers? The information is not clear. As I've said it's to pretty, you, it is all human life it is, clear. is, Hamas is sacred. Hamas haven't even tried to hide it's it. Sacred. But I'm not trying to hide anything. You're trying to hide well, something. No, it's trying know, to... And, and, you no, know, no, with respect, mm -hmm. with respect, you are trying to... You are definitely trying to dissemble here, and I'll explain why. I've given you an opportunity to simply say whether you condemn what Hamas did, which, by the way, they have brazenly boasted about. They posted videos celebrating what they did. There is no doubt about what Hamas did. They want you to know what they did. They want me to know that. They want the world to know. They killed Jewish people in the main and in Israel with impunity. 260 people at a music festival. Babies, grandmothers, they kidnapped 200 people. God knows what's happened to them. Now, you can shake your head, but what you can't do is deny that that happened because Hamas have admitted it brazenly and with and great pride. And I have publicly pride. stated... And sec and so, I've secondly, if, they, if they've admitted it, do you condemn what they did? I absolutely mourn the loss of all human life in this conflict, and I have struggled for 15 years of my life in a way mm. that... Piers, to be honest, you haven't, OK? And I take you as an empathetic person with a high level of emotional intelligence, OK? Mm -hmm. I have struggled for 15 years of my life to stop the killing, for a ceasefire now, to stop deaths. But I have to say, Piers, that actually this line of questioning, unfortunately, on a personal level, is somewhat hypocritical, and I'll explain why. Mm -hmm. On April 18th, 2022, you said the exact phrase, that you feel like Nelson Mandela walking out of prison on the long road to freedom of speech. Today, there is a statue for Nelson Mandela outside Parliament. Now, Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, Beit Salim, and even the Harvard Law School have said that Israel practices apartheid against the Palestinian people. Do you know what the ANC struggle against apartheid entailed? Are you aware that the ANC are believed to have very unfortunately, horrifically and terribly taken the live, lives of children and civilians in their struggle against apartheid? So, Piers, you seem absolutely content to not only compare yourself to Nelson Mandela, who served 27 years in jail for what they described as terrorism at the time, but yet you cannot see what the vast majority of human rights organizations in the world see when they look at the Palestinians. When you look at UN Resolution 194, paragraph 11, the Palestinians have the right to return home. Almost a, a million of them were displaced in 1948 with the foundation of the State of Israel. And what we are now on the brink of is Palestinians, millions of, millions of them, being driven into the Sinai Desert with help of the US Delta Force, yeah, but low key, with low help key, let of me the jump British. In. This let me jump is in. a manufactured, You're making... an Israeli manufactured okay. humanitarian catastrophe in you Gaza. Making... There is a 23% making... infant mortality key, rate in something. Gaza. Let me say something. I completely agree with you about the plight of the Palestinian people. I've tweeted about this for the last two weeks. No, no, to be fair, you haven't, Piers, and this is not journalism. Shirin Abu well, Akhla was tweets. journalism. Yasser Murtaja was journalism. Mu'taz uh, Azaiza, that's journalism. Palestinians right. are reaching out from the cage that Israel has put them in, and they are trying to speak to the world. Yeah, and they are I'm being met, saying, they are being met with cold indifference. And I would say to you, Piers, I would say to yeah. you that that gentleman that you've just had on the show, Mark, mm -hmm. Regev, Mark Regev, he belongs in The Hague. David mm -hmm. Petraeus, you know, Piers, you made your reputation as opposing the invasion of Iraq. Well, yeah. I would ask you, journalist to journalist, how mm. could you justify the interview you just gave to the head of US forces in that illegal occupation of Iraq that David Petraeus led? He was then the head of the CIA. Both of the individuals mm. that you have just had on this show deserve to be in The Hague tried for war crimes. I am not anything like them. I have not hurt a fly. 
those two men have? Why are they given the respectability that you gave them with your interview? And why am I interrogated as if I am somehow someone that could hurt a human being? Um, but the issue comes that if you can't separate that ongoing dispute between Israel and Palestine from the absolutely appalling barbarism of October the 7th, which was on a whole different scale to anything we've seen, where 1,400 people, Holocaust survivors, babies in their, in their cribs, you know, young women taken, uh, tortured, abused, shot, beheaded, we, we, it was reported, and so on. If we can't look at that collectively oh. with, a, with a, a general humanity and agreement that that is an absolute atrocity, then there's something wrong with this. And I find that the, the tribalism on both sides is now so toxic and so frenzied that you get people who literally can't. We've had a bunch of actors, right, signing this statement, saying they want a ceasefire in Gaza and calling Israel war criminals and so on. But they don't say a word about the Hamas attacks that precipitated this. And I find that you really, hard, them, right? really hard to accept. But, you, but, you, but do you agree with them? If, if they had said, for example, that October 7 attacks were brutal and, and massacres occurred, and then they said everything else, that Israel is committing war crimes, would you agree with them? I, well, it, OK, here's what I would honestly say about that. Is Israel not allowed to defend itself from the worst terror attack we've seen since 9-11? Is it not allowed to defend itself it's just odd. after 1,400 people in Israel are butchered in that way? And the question then, if you assume that they are able to defend themselves, as any Pierce, free democratic the, country, that is the then, then the question State becomes... Department line, Hassan, that me, is the IDF's uh, line, Hassan, that is the line that everyone Hassan, let me ask channeled. you this. It then becomes a question of how can they defend themselves? If their mission now is to get rid of Hamas, a terror organisation that's committed one of the worst acts of terror ever seen, if that is their stated aim, mm -hmm. then what they are doing is consistent with that, isn't it? No. Here's why this is actually an abject failure. And this is not just my perspective on the matter. I'm just a you know, dumb idiot uh, with a Twitch stream who, who is live reacting to the news and trying to make sense of everything as it's ongoing. I usually have a policy of not covering breaking news. And, and uh, sometimes that policy is violated. But uh, ultimately, I am not uh, held up by the same journalistic standards, even though I think I do a much better job than most other news outlets in, uh, in general. So let me just say this really quickly. You said Israel has a right to defend itself. Absolutely zero people think that this is a ridiculous statement. However, how Israel is defending yeah. itself is collective punishment. Now, collective punishment in the form of depriving 2.2 million people of electricity, collective punishment in the form of depriving them of of water, of food, collective punishment of uh, in the form of 51 people dying in the West Bank where, you know, there is no Hamas in the West Bank and yet 51 people have died because in the West Bank settlers that are occupying Palestinian territory in violation of the international law, settlers who are doing an act of colonial terrorism, and this is not my statement on it, this is international law, that are doing horrifying things by simply just existing there and, and maintaining the presence uh, with, a, with an occupying force in the form of IDF, who is ritualistically humiliating Palestinians uh, uh, in, in, a, in a structure that B'Tselem, an Israeli organization, calls the permit regime, where every waking moment of, of uh, Palestinians' lives in the West Bank are absolute hell, where they have no legal recourse. 51 Palestinians have died, and that was before the Ramallah uh, the, the Ramallah protest that happened last night and uh, the Israeli forces were uh, opening up with live fire on protesters last night. So who knows what that death toll has become. This is all, this is all a product of Israel being an apartheid state. This is a violent apartheid state. There is no way to be a let, peaceful apartheid right, state. Let me ask you state. this. It is, you this. it is a violence let it me is ask violence you this, required for its maintenance. OK, listen. And that violence is frustrating people. I hear that you. That violence I is radicalizing you. people. But here's Hold my, on. I hear as you. far as Israel, as far as, as far as what Benjamin Netanyahu has done, as far as the war government, what they have done, Pierce, going into Gaza yeah. and bombing Gaza and killing 3,480 uh, Palestinians so far in Gaza, 1,000 plus children mm. out of all of those casualties, 22 hospitals being bombed, a bakery, the only remaining intact bakery being bombed yesterday. Um, these, are, these are 
horrifying crimes mm. that you would openly say are horrifying and unjustifiable when Russia does it, but when Israel does it, it Israel has a right to defend itself. This is identical to the same talking points that I've heard from every Israeli administration official. It's the same talking points that I've heard from American politicians championing the, the exact same talking points. It's the same thing that I've heard from everyone else in the media. You might have been against the Iraq uh, war, and, and you use that, but you're using that for, for evil, in my opinion, at this point. If you are not sitting here and condemning those acts of war crimes, those acts of violence, the, those acts of collective punishment. Well, honestly, I, I didn't expect the framing that you put on this segment, and it's a uh, framing like that that's disgusting. So I don't see what this has anything to do with anti-Semitism. I, I formed Young Turks in TYT with two Jewish friends who are some of my friends growing up. We've known each other and been brothers for over 40 years now. So I think what Hamas did is disgusting. I cry uh, for those Israeli innocent civilians. Uh, but do I see you guys crying for Palestinians? I mean, Chris Christie was just on here treating it like it's no big deal because, what, Palestinian lives don't matter? I think the real bigotry here is saying that Palestinians, we can kill three times as many of them already, and this is the appetizer. Netanyahu and his barbaric government have not even started the entree of murder and death and mayhem they're about to do, and that's somehow okay, killing three times as many Palestinian civilians let alone the occupation, which is bigotry by definition. We say that everyone in the world can uh, defend themselves, can have their own state, can have sovereignty, except the Palestinians. And the reasoning behind that is the Palestinians are what? Uh, they're what? The idea is that they are savages and that Muslims are too violent and cannot control themselves. So they must be occupied for 56 brutal, disgusting years. So I've had enough of the bigotry against Muslims and Palestinians, and I need you to speak out against that instead of covering every outrageous, atrocious action of the right-wing government of Israel and going, oh, it's anti-Semitism. No, when, and there is global anti-Semitism. There's anti-Semitism here in this country. Two synagogues were shot up, Pittsburgh and in Southern California. We fight against that all the time. But then when, whenever Israel is criticized, you, people go, oh, no, it's anti-Semitism. No, there's real anti-Semitism. Well, okay. let, let and me, instead, let of me that, respond. instead of attacking that, all you guys mm. ever do is hide behind the veil of anti-Semitism. Do you know why well, Palestinians well, might not like Israelis? Because they've been oppressed jump, for me 56 straight years. I, I hear you. I hear you. And let me respond. Uh, a, I'm not you guys. I don't think I fit into any neat fit on this issue at all. Um, B, I've actually covered this story, I think, more fairly than most people. I've had many pro-Palestinian voices I've given a huge platform for. They've been getting enormous audiences from Bassam Yusuf to others, and I've done that okay, quite I deliberately because I think these voices I think these voices are important to be heard, including yours. Uh, I certainly wasn't accusing you, by the way, or your organisation of anti-Semitism. I just think I have found it, as somebody who's always identified as liberal myself, uh, I have found it very dispiriting to see people who call themselves liberals Who've, whose instant response, it seemed to me, to one of the worst terror attacks we've ever seen was to immediately side with the place where these attacks have been launched from. Now, I don't tar all Palestinians with the brush of being Hamas at all. Uh, and, in fact, the sooner Hamas are out of there, the better for the Palestinian people and the world. Um, but I just think the only human response you can have is, as you did, by the way, to your credit, is it was disgusting what happened on October the 7th. Now, the question then becomes, what is a proportionate response by Israel? Uh, not just to the terror attacks of October the 7th, but obviously there is now a huge ongoing escalation in what has been, as you rightly say, a 56-year uh, war, effectively, in varying degrees over that period. And that's where I think I, I, I'm struggling to see how a ground invasion by Israel, with all that that would entail, particularly mass deaths of Palestinian civilians, how that is going to do anything for any peaceful resolution to this. I think it will have the opposite effect. I'm not going to waste my time talking about the report with Clarissa. Uh, because this takes away from the point you mentioned before there was a deadlock in the debate There's no deadlock in the debate. There is terror in the debate You are unable to debate with Israel because what's happened so far is we're witnessing the sick relationship between the United States and Israel 
where basically uh, the United States has given uh, a permission for Israel to uh, have genocide on ground. And what's happened is we're seeing uh, no one can say no to Israel. The United Nations isn't able to say no to Israel without repercussions. Uh, media, in, media figures aren't able to say no to Israel without, uh, without repercussions. So what ends up happening is that you're basically raising a spoiled brat you're unable to say no to that has now grown up to be a sociopath. And let me reiterate that the relationship between the United States and Israel is putting the world in jeopardy. So what we're witnessing now is a, a, a serious issue where both parties need to reassess their relationship. I understand that Biden, because he's pitted his own people against each other and wasted billions of dollars uh, giving them to Israel instead of looking at his own homeless, his own medical uh, care issue, his own student loans issue. So a lot of American people are also extremely angry and they're also looking at unfair coverage. The reason this video has gone so viral one, it's alarming that it's gone so viral because what should be going viral is the footage that we are witnessing out of Palestine, out of the occupied territories of children being massacred. It's not a war. A war assumes that both parties are on equal footing. OK, I hear you. Uh, what I would say in response to that uh, is that on October the 7th, Hamas, who are the ruling authority in Gaza, committed an act of such heinous terrorism, killing 1,500 people, including 260 people okay, at the music festival. Okay, in 1948, festival. No, let me we finish, witnessed Rachma, the Nakba. Let me finish. What happened let me just then? Ask, uh, let what me about just say, the militia? Rachma, let me, no, let me no, just ask I, you the I, question. I'm, I'm really... I'm, I'm... No, no, you have to let me ask a question. I, I've been very polite to you and respectful. Ask. I've let you have your say. I'm going to say something now to you, and you can respond. Bear That's in mind there's interview. a delay, so this isn't exactly the easiest debate to have. Well, that's why I said at the start, why don't we... Let me ask questions, you answer them, and that's the way this can proceed in a respectable manner. I would simply say to you ask. that I've had a number of pro-Palestinian voices on this programme in the last two weeks um, and a number of uh, pro-Israel voices. Many of the pro-Palestinian people I've had on have been very quick to condemn what Hamas did on October the 7th. Some have not. What's your position? Before we get to what you just said to me about what Israel has done and what America is doing and so on, what is your view as someone in Egypt about what happened right on your border there in Gaza uh, by Hamas against Israel? It's a very fair question. But the thing is, maybe I have a privilege being so close to the border, having many Palestinian friends, uh, knowing more history, uh, that I understand that once you oppress a people, and again, I'm not justifying what happened. The killing of civilians on both parts ought to be condemned. But the danger in you starting an interview, asking me to condemn Hamas, then pours into Israel's blind def defense of its own state, which ends up killing over 5,000 Palestinians over 700 dead. And going back to the report that you were discussing at the beginning with the CNN reporter, the mm. issue with that is everything is always taken out of context. And this is the issue we have with Western media. Had the journalist uh, been there on ground with the volunteers that night, as for example I was, she would have listened to the bombardment of Israeli uh, bombs that start from 2.30 a.m. and do not stop. She would have but also you, witnessed but, the fact that Rachman, we would get me... an okay from Israel's side, I'm not done, uh, from Israel's side that the supplies would go in and then it's like they toy with your morale so that you, for hope from both sides is stopped. The narrative has got to change okay, the idea. I, the I, I, for example, I don't have a, the PR of Israel. I don't have the money to, uh, mm. to, to hire the Justin Beavers of the world and, and, and have them say, pray for Israel and whatnot. But what I do have is the truth. And the reason this video has gone so viral is because people felt it.